Hi everyone. This is going to be our first uh, transition to a full webinar on, on YouTube. And I'm just making sure that I can see the comments as far as I know. Uh, I am broadcasting out to everyone. If um, someone wants to say hello on the chat, let me know where you are. That would be great. We are um, going to be, uh, actually this is, this is sort of the first time I'm really getting used to this. So I can see folks are there. This is great. Um, so hi everyone. Uh, today what we're going to do is we're going to be talking about tidy data. And the point of these um, webinars and these presentations are not only to talk about some topics, but to also show you how I do things within Datagraph. And we will be um, working through a whole bunch of different examples today to uh, not only talk about tidy data, but again, just to show you how I do things within Datagraph. So let me just go ahead and get started. And by the way, my name is Pamela Schultz. If for any of you who are new, I'll go ahead and let you see what I'm looking at on my screen here. So one of the things that I do is, uh, and I see Andrew's on the chat. Nice to see you, Andrew. Um, I, I often make my presentations within Datagraph itself. So I just thought I'd also show you a little, you know, my own behind the scenes as we were doing this. This is just a couple of slides that I put together. And in Datagraph, you have the presentation mode that you can switch to. And I'm going to do that right now so you can just see what happens when I do this. That creates a, um, uh, a, a window that you can actually share. So if I had been doing this in Zoom, for example, or you're giving a Zoom presentation, this becomes a shareable window. Uh, again, I'm sort of showing you behind the scenes so that you can see this and I'm going to use this today, but um, I just, I think it's such a cool thing to be aware of that you can do this within Datagraph. Uh, so let's talk about tidy data. Uh, this topic or this term tidy data really is uh, quite popular and it's, there's a, what's called the tidyverse package within R um, and the concept of tidy data is really useful for understanding how to organize data sets, how to do data analysis. So today, the I guess the three main things that I had wanted to set out to talk about were uh, just an overview of tidy data concepts. I wanted to show you how to tidy data within Datagraph. And again, the purpose is showing you that and also some other uh, tips and you know tricks that I use when I'm cl cleaning my data or organizing data. And the um, other thing is to sh give you a demo of the R data graph package. And, uh, and along the way, I, I can't see the chat. So if there are any other, uh, you know, any questions you have, I'm going to uh, keep within the uh, about a 30 minute time frame. Uh, maybe less, maybe hopefully not any more than that, and then time for questions and answers after that as well. And so basically, the um, what you're seeing here is just very quickly a data set, yes, is a collection of values. And in the paper that, uh, I might as well just go ahead and just show you this, the link to, I believe, this particular website is on the description within the YouTube, on the YouTube page. Um, so this is a, a paper that Hadley Wickham published, uh, let's see, what year is this? 2014, so you can, you can get the paper here, you can get the, the, um, the paper, you can get data sets that are used within the paper. And, uh, and, and this is really, a, 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 in this paper, it does a great job of laying out what is meant by this uh, concept of tidy data. And, and again, that concept has really sort of taken off. And, um, and so I, one of the reasons, actually, I guess I really wanted to do this is because when I've read this paper and looked at the concepts of tidy data, I think it actually translates very well to Datagraph, which obviously is part of the reason why I'm interested in talking about it. So, uh, so back again to just this 
you know, brief slides here. Um, we have a data set, it's a collection of values, and you can think of your data as being divided into variables. As an example, given in the paper would be temperature or height could be a variable, but an observation would be the day in which you measure temperature or a person that you're measuring height. I can just click on the next one here and you see how this changes. Again, often if, you, if you're actually doing this within a, a presentation, I would have this, I drag this away. I might as well just do that leave you seeing the presentation window, but then on my other window, I can control what people are seeing. Anyways, back to this topic. Um, how, again, how can we think about this? Well, from the paper, every column would be a variable, every row is an observation, and within a cell, we have a single value. So if you're using this, these sort of three criteria as a guiding principle to organize data, it leads you to a certain organization, which we're gonna talk about. And the terminology that is used within the paper is really the difference, and maybe I should have organized this in verses, but tidy data is what we're, what we're aiming for. Something that's not tidy in the, in the paper is referred to as messy data. In data graph, I tend to have used the terminology um, a flattened data set, and we talk about how to flatten data within data graph, and that's what I'm going to show you today. Um, but you'll also see people refer to long data sets because a tidy data set is often very long, few columns, but lots of rows. So a data set that's messy is also often referred to as a wide data set. Okay, so. There are two examples. I can go ahead and get, if you're doing presentation mode, you can just close the presentation window. So for, for two examples to show you, um, this actually comes from a, um, oh, in fact, I maybe didn't put this link on your, on the website, but I can, I can do that afterwards. This is a, a a page that's on the R uh, CRAN um, R project data site uh, website where they talk about tidy data and really go through the examples or very similar examples that's in the tidy data paper and and this is where I grabbed some data for this presentation. So for the first two data sets, I grabbed them here from this website. And I'll just show you again, just to, you know, give you illustrations of how do I work in data graph to get a data, you know, from the web like this, that's in on a web page, literally just can highlight and copy. And then within data graph, you can just go ahead and paste that data in. Now, one thing that can happen and, um, I guess I didn't mention, but I was going to say how you've probably heard this quote. If you haven't yet, the the idea that 80% of data analysis is data cleaning and data preparation. Um, well, when I pasted this in right now, just the default pasting, it actually didn't do what I wanted to do. In fact, what you see is here's data that has a name, but the name is actually not in the right column um, for the header. The header is not corresponding to the data. So how can I fix this? Well, let me just undo um, what I just did. And in data graph, what we have is a paste special functionality that lets you control a little bit more how things are pasted. So if you pick paste special and in this data set, you would want to change this to the separator being a space. Now you can see everything in the different columns, but it is not automatically assigning the data uh, data header. So I'm just going to paste this. And now what I want to do is shift the data in this row. So the name actually is now uh, above where the actual data is for the name. And I can do that under the data menu within data graph. There's an option to shift row entries to the right or the left. So I'll go ahead and do that. Now, once I have things aligned properly, I can right click on a row and use row for column titles. 
And, uh, and, and so that's a very handy shortcut to know for your data cleaning and preparation. Okay, and I can hit delete. And if you have this window pop up, it's asking me, what do you want to delete? It's showing the structure of my data here. And I'm gonna say, I only want to delete the data in the visible columns that I can see. Um, so essentially these are the steps that I was using to prepare the data that you see here. And in fact, I'll just go ahead and highlight these objects and delete them just to focus on these two tables that I've brought in. And what this is meant to do is to compare the same exact data, but one is transposed from the other. They're just in two different orientations where in the first table here, you can see how we have, um, well, I, made, I just call this student. So this is like a student number, the name of the student, and then each quiz is its own column. I can compare this to this format where now I have the quiz as an entry within this column, and then the names of the students are going across the top. Neither of these examples are considered tidy data. Both of these would be in the messy data category. In Datagraph, to take each of these and make them tidy, we use the data flatten columns option. Now notice when I click on this now and you can go down to the bottom, you'll see flatten columns. It's not, uh, it's not a selection you can make because I haven't selected the data I want to flatten. So I can do that by holding the shift key, select one column, hold the shift key again, select the other column. So this is the part of the data that is messy. And if I say data flatten columns, now I have a tidy version of that data. Let's do the same thing here. Again, hold the shift, data, flatten columns, and now this is a tidy version of the same exact data. They're sorted differently because things were in different, um, a different order. And in fact, by default, what, what we currently do when we flatten is the column that was the uh, that was the headers across the, the table forming the wide table, uh, it ends up being sorted by that. Now in, in the tidy paper, they recommend you actually sort um, by the first column. And I can do that within data graph. I can select a column and I actually, actually I can right click on that column and select a sort, and then you have options. So just be careful that you're picking how you really want to sort it. It, when you have your data in groups, as I do, it will ask you what group do you want to sort. And uh, you can you could sort everything in your file, but here I'm just sorting everything that's in um, table one. So that just sorted this data here. So now actually, I can just move this around. These are now sorted in the same way. But one thing I thought was actually interesting when I copy and pasted these um, tables from that website is actually there were some differences in the, um, the data themselves in terms of what was considered, um, or, or in this one table you have an F and in this one it's given as false. I think that probably was meant to also be an F. But in fact, actually, now that I think of it, I, this is not actually sorted in the same direction. So I would still need to sort this, um, sort my table two. Now every now the names are sorted exactly the same. Anyway, I can change this to an F. And notice how it just actually makes it easier to see those discrepancies between these two data sets. Um, it, you know, it, it's uh, when you have data that's in a wide format, it can be often easier for it's really more of a presentation type of a, a formatting, a table that you might put, for example, in a, in a paper. Um, but there's a, you know, a lot of advantages to using this type of a setup within a set of data. Um, I'm trying to think what else I wanted to show here. Oh, another thing, a, a data cleaning that you can do when you're getting your data tidy is here, for example, the NAs in this case don't have 
the brackets um, here they do if I just wanted to remove those then I could um, select these columns and go under data find and replace and one thing that uh, I really like this little interface here because if I say I want to find that um, left hand uh, character it will show me within this view what it's going to look like when I actually um, do the action of this change. So I can do that one and then do the same thing. Actually, I can select all of these data, um, find and replace. And now I'm going to do the right hand side. And uh, again, it gives you the preview, preview of exactly what it's, it's going to look like when I do that change. Uh, so now that these data are the same. Other things that I could do here, I could map these uh, letter grades to a numerical value um, and, and use that. I don't think I'll do that in the interest of time so I can get to my other examples. But now at least you can see two data sets. These are both now um, tidy and we could now work with these more. So if I map this to a numerical value, then I could easily calculate an average across all of these values or an average for individual um, students or individual categories. So it gives me that ability to sort of slice and, and dice my data in a much easier way. So the next example that I wanted to do, let's go ahead and go over to here. And again, this is um, on this tidy data page within the CRAN on the CRAN R project website. And down here, there's another um, data set that we talk about or that's discussed in the paper. And this is the billboard data set. So if you want to get this data and work through this with me, if you go to the uh, website for the paper, you can download the, um, the data sets. And then I have that let's see over here in my finder there's a folder that gets downloaded so the one that i'm using is the billboards.csv and to bring this into data graph very quickly you can just right click on this and say open with data graph and that will open a file that basically imported all of the data into my data graph file. And what you'll notice right away from this billboards data set is the data set is that it's very, very uh, wide. There's a lot of data here. And what I want to do is to um, what, step through uh, some data cleaning for this data set, similar to what's done on this um, within this web page. So let me just make sure that I have the right page here. Yeah, so, he, so here's the billboard data set. And, uh, and the first thing that they do here using R, uh, just for kind of comparing the different commands, is to use a pivot longer command to, again, make it a long data set, what we refer to as a flat data set. So if I go back to my data graph file and I select the first column, where I have data by week. So maybe I should just actually take a moment to discuss what is this data set? Well, it's, um, it's a, a data set of billboard. Uh, this is uh, music uh, charts, chart data for the 2000s. And, uh, and so you can see how there is a column for year, column for artist, a column for each track, um, the uh, length of the track, the genre, the date when it started, the at getting on the charts, its peak date. And then what you have here is its rank for every week that it was on the charts. Uh, so again, a lot of different columns here. And the, the question actually that I was interested in sort of pursuing by um, pulling up this data was, well, what artist has the most weeks on the chart out of this entire data set. And if you wanted to examine that or answer that question 
with the data in this format, uh, it would take a little bit of figuring out as to how to do this. Now, certainly in data graph, this would be very hard to do because um, you'd have to uh, do an action across all these different rows or yeah, across all these different columns. Um, we just we just wouldn't do that like this. So for a data set this big, I would absolutely, you know, you would need to really flatten this to be able to work with it. So to do that, I'll select my first column. I'll go over here, hold the shift key, select the last column, and then I can use my data flatten columns. And there it is. So now I took, uh, I didn't actually check to see how many rows that was before I did this, but now I have a long data set. It's a data set that I can, uh, I can see the, the format uh, entirely, you know, scroll down to see all the data. You can look down below to see how many rows of data you have and how many columns. So here's 23,000 rows. Um, and another benefit of using tidy data is that you're actually creating a format that is also completely scalable. And for a database or a data analysis, and you know, you can certainly use data graph and, and very similar to a database. Um, having a consistent format where you're not having to change the column headers and what your table looks like is a huge benefit. And I, I guess I don't have any examples to really illustrate that now, but once you have set up, for example, different um, uh, pivoting commands to do different uh, actions and answer different questions, if you have a new data set, it's a matter of just dropping in that data into the same format and everything updates. Um, so so a, uh, scalability is a big thing that we think about a lot for the way that um, you, you do work within data graph. Anyway, so this format is very scalable. It, did, it is independent of any year now that I've flattened it. Um, and I have my column for the week and I have my rank value here. So let's go back over to, actually not this page. This is the one that I'm on. Um, this is on the website to see, okay, so now that they flattened the data, what other data cleaning did they do here? And one of the things they did was to drop any missing values from the rank column. Um, so there were a number of different missing values in this data set because again, since it was in that wide format, uh, whenever there, you know, it was the width of the data set was actually dependent upon um, how many weeks an individual track was on the um, was on the charts. So it, again, it was very data dependent. So if you look here now, as it's flattened, I have a bunch of columns that just say NA. I want to remove those from this data set. In data graph, that's very easy. I can just right click on this column. So I don't have anything selected right now. I just go to the column value, put my mouse over where there's an NA. I do a, um, a, a right click or a control click and I say, select all rows that equal NA. And now that's exactly what it's done. If I scroll around, you'll see that the rows that are highlighted all contain NAs. And then all I have to do is hit the delete key and it's removed that from that data set. So one difference also that you can think of between what's being illustrated here on this page, the way that they're they're setting up um, a script within R to do these actions, is that that script is something that uh, really you know could be used over and over again. So it's it is true that when you're doing this in data graph, I when I do these actions, uh, if you brought in a new data set with the same exact format, you may have to redo this uh, data cleaning, but it, it's. It's pretty quick, and I, I really love the way that you can, again, see very visually in data graph what is happening as you're doing it. Okay, so the next thing here that they did was uh, to clean this, to convert the week variable to a number uh, and figuring out the date corresponding on the charts. So if I go to back to my data set here and I look at my category, you can see how 
this is now, um, it contains a lot of text. I can't convert this to a number. Well, I can convert it to a number actually. Um, if Again, if you're sort of new to data graph and you're not completely familiar with this, this is important to point out how in the top corner of a row, you can see what the data type is for that column. Anywhere you see an AB that indicates it's imported as a text. And if I want this to be a number that I can then, um, you know, have a weak number, for example, is what this really is, then I want to strip out all the text that's here. So there's there's a, a way to do this would be to um, highlight the column. I can do data, find and replace. And notice how one of the options is to remove non-number. So that's all I've done. I did the find, I selected the column, brought up find and replace. I can use the remove non-number option and it's giving me a preview and showing me that once I do this change, now all the text has been stripped out. So I can see all of these now are categories that are numbers or well, the week. I can, I can just change the name of my column to week. Another thing that I might want to do here is, oh, well, I have to ch also change this to a number column so that I can do numerical actions on it. And I can do that um, either by using the gear menu on the object itself and convert to a number. You also get the same menu by right clicking here and you can convert between them. Um, also notice that the date column, uh, if I look at these objects over here or the columns themselves, these did not get interpreted as a, as, a, as a date. These are actually interpreted right now as numbers. So when you see, um, again, you can tell just by the icon here, this is in, interpreting that as a number. We want this to be an actual date. So again, how do I do that? Well, I can click on the gear menu, convert this to a date, and I can do the same one for the other column. Now it has the proper icon in the top right corner. And the other thing I guess to, um, to be aware of is when you convert a column to a date, uh, basically data graph is, is going to interpret what the date format is. And for these two columns, it was very easy to do. If you wanna confirm that the format was done correctly, you can open the object and you'll see year, month, day. Um, which is what the format is. And also the fact that none of these are red indicates that there's no, no errors in this data. Um, so an another thing I wanted to show you is, um, is the sorting. So uh, this is something that, you know, within R, it shows you it has an, an option for arranging the data. You can sort and give the order of things that you want to sort. Um, for that table. So sort by artist, track week. Now in data graph, I showed you earlier how you can sort, but if I want it in a certain order, then you'd actually go opposite of what you see here. So if I go to my data, I would say, well, I want to sort it by week, which it actually is currently already sorted by week. Then I would uh, click this column one at a time and I can sort the, well, I'm sorting not just this column, I'm sorting all my columns, but then I would sort by track. And then I would go to the artist column and sort by artist. So now if you look at the first few rows of this data as compared to what R shows you when you first do the sorting is it's giving, it's giving you a preview of this data um, you can see it has um, Tupac is the number one here, and you'll see that the same row of data is shown within my data set that I have here. Now, um, I wanted to answer the question, who has the most, what artist had, had, uh, had a track on the billboard for the most number of weeks for this data set? In data graph, with this set up in this long format, this is now very easy for me to do. I can select the artist list 
and I can just click the pivot command. And what's that? What, what is that going to do? Well, by default, if I use a text column and I click on the pivot command, it's going to do a count of all of the um, the number of records. So here now every row indicates that that's a week that that artist had a track on the billboard charts. So if I wanted to then sort this, the pivot command has an autom automatic sorting that I can do um, and it will show you in either direction. I can say increasing or decreasing. But the, um, the other thing, I guess, to show you here, what I usually do for data like this is I convert it to a Y standard. And now this is obviously, this is a little bit hard to see um, exactly which one is the top one. But if I just manually click and drag, I can then view the, um, view the top ones. You also might want to um, give a little width here because the the name of the artist is not uh, shown. I can do that actually even after I've zoomed in. If you click this little X, that highlight window will go away. And then I can right click and say Y space and make this extra wide. You can also control that Y space in the axis settings where you can just say exactly even and have a slider that you can change that. Okay, so the other thing that I want to do here is I want to have, say, just the top 10 artists. So in fact, to do that, hang on with me just for one second. Here we go. We're going to, um, to get the top, this is kind of the trick that I do, actually make this decreasing within the pivot command and then for the Y type, say that it's reversed. And the reason that I do that is then because the, the top, um, the highest count bar is at the location one, and then the next one is two and three and four. So I can restrict what I am plotting to the top 10 if I type in, just give me one to 10 here. Um, so now I can see pretty clearly, you know, who the top 10 is. Now, I guess I, I formatted that within my graph. You don't actually have to go through the formatting if you really just wanted to see the list um, because you have the option in the gear menu of extracting all the pivot columns. And when I do that, it's going to extract it in the order that I've decided based on this um, selection here. And I can, again, change from increasing to decreasing, and then I get the same information within my data table. So I, I, and I am now at 11.30. The last thing that I wanted to show you, and I'm going to do this, um, I'm, not, I'm not gonna walk through every step, but I just, I wanted to quickly point out to you the R package that we have for data graph. And, um, and in fact, oh, here we go. So I actually earlier had gone into our studio and had uh, pulled, uh, done, you know, a couple of commands within here to show how you pull out data into data graph. And basically, well, the first thing you need is you have to have the data graph R package. So you can get that if you use R, you load that package. And then when you want to use it, you use library data graph. And there's a command here, write D table. That will write out a file that you can, um, you can then uh, bring into data graph. So actually, I wrote out a couple of different files here. Here's another one, it's you're giving the location. This is actually a data set that's in that tidy data in this format as, as an untidy or messy data set. And if I wanted just to show you uh, on here, oh, I 
Now I've got too many windows open. Let me see if I can get to the one that I want to get to. Here we go. So here is, in fact, the, um, the D table that gets output when you use the data graph R package. It basically can take anything that's in R, it pipes it into a D table, and then that D table is something that I can also just open into data graph. And what you see is actually a live uh, connection to that D table. You know, it's, it's in bold, um, it's showing you that it's connected. And if I want to flatten data that I'm taking from R to tidy it, I would have to take this data and you can edit, copy as text, and then edit, um, paste. And now you can see um, that the data is in a format that I could flatten. So uh, with that, let me go ahead and just see, is, does anyone have any comments or questions? And in the meantime, go ahead and um, if there's anything that you want to add, please do that on the chat. Hopefully I didn't go too, too fast today. Um, but I will also pull up for you the, on our own web page, if you go to the data graph community, you'll see that there is a page on how to flatten data. So you can also refer to this. I have an example here of data that is in a wide or messy format. And then after it's flattened, again, you see the long format of the data. The other thing that you can refer to on our knowledge base is this page on the R data graph package and um, talks, you how to, talks you through how to install this package and um, gives you an example of this data set. And again, extracting it into a D table file that then you can read into data graph. And, you know, the advantage of doing that would be if you have a data set and you want to do some visualization on it, you can have that live connection to R or you could, again, bring the data in as I did. And if you wanted to manipulate it, you would have to copy it as text and then paste it back in. But that would let you, um, would let you further manipulate that data. So any, any comments or questions on the chat? I'm not seeing any now. Um, I am open to questions on anything related to data graph, anything you're thinking about, um, any ideas for topics that you would like to see us discuss. Um, I can show you one one kind of trick actually that I think is kind of cute in the meantime. Um, what I do, what I would do with something like this, where I want to take a value that is actually a, um, you know, if this was, this is back to the grades data set. So this, these are grades A, B, C, D, F, uh, but what if I want to do some statistics on this? It's Even though it's tidy, it still isn't something that I can numerically evaluate. Now, maybe originally these grades had um, had a number value associated with them and then were put into a letter grade. But let's say we're going the other way around. All we have is a letter grade and we want to see some appropriate distribution of this data. Well, I can take my text value and I can map that into a numeric value. And you can actually do that right within the object itself. So for any text value, or sorry, text column, there's a values option that I can say map. And I can just type into this how I want to map this data. So I could say I want A, for example, to be a 95. I want B to be an 85, I want C to be a 75, and we'll go ahead and give our D um, a 65, and maybe the F is a um, 50. So right now that doesn't change anything in terms of the table, what we're looking at, but I can click on this button here to display what I've mapped. And what this allows you to do is, again, to use this 
for example, in a plot, you know, the plot command will only let you um, use numerical values. In fact, a lot of the data graph commands are designed for just numerical data. And as a result, um, uh, you couldn't do anything if it was just just text. You couldn't you couldn't use it in a plot or something like that. So anyway, so um, what's what I find handy though is to uh, because it still is a text column, even though it's allowed now to be used in other columns. But if you want to say um, see both the value here in its text form and you want to see the number value. What I do is add in an expression column, and then I'll set that expression equal to the name of this column. So now I can actually view both a text value and a numerical value. And then I can take this column and do something like hit the space bar and see a histogram of all the grades of my data. If I wanted to then filter this data on either name or category, I could also easily do that. I can make a histogram of this uh, column and then I could go ahead, oops, actually I hit the wrong command there. Let me do a, here it is, histogram. So now I can see this histogram and I could use a mask to uh, pick you know, what, what I wanted to see. So if I just wanted to see the histogram for, um, actually I can do a little text menu. It's kind of a nice way to do it. So then I can easily just change which one am I looking at. Um, so again, being able to slice and dice the data with this kind of a tidy format being much, much easier. And the um, last thing that I guess I'll say that is a a trick that I use all the time uh, before I'll, I'll uh, say goodbye, unless there's any, any other questions, then I'll be, because again, this is a nice format for, for analyzing, filtering data, uh, you know, performing calculations, but it still isn't necessarily the format we want to use for presentation. And with the pivot command, if I select my data, and then I add a pivot command. By default, it's just doing a sum. So let's go ahead and do something a little bit. Oh, wait, yeah, I want the number value. So that's an example where having the number value is very, um, so this would be my number grade. There we go. So here's my numeric grade across my, uh, my students. The pivot command has this really nice functionality that lets you switch who is or, or what dimension is on the x-axis. Uh, it's helpful here, I think, to add a legend because then you can see your, you know, the two different dimensions that are being used here. And I can swap which one is in the uh, is in the legend versus which one is shown within my um, within my in my graphic here and and then, then what I can also do is I can again do this extract all pivot columns and then what that shows me is a table I can place this in a group so here is some output from the pivot command if I just want to look just at that and now it's in a format that is uh, akin to what we might put in a report or we, what we might want to, um, you know, visualize in that way. But it's a live connection to the data in the uh, in the tidy format that you see here. Anyway, that's something that I use all the time. Um, thank you. I'm glad uh, if this was useful and and uh, look forward to to doing this again. Um, and if there's anything else that you need help with, of course, let us know. You can always go under the help menu within Datagraph, ask a question on the forum, or ask a question via email. We have some interesting things we've been working on that we're going to probably release this uh, next week. 
where we have uh, a rec- we had a rec- we've had a request in the um, fit command when we do the nonlinear fitting to ha- be able to add constraints. So that's something we're working on, um, and we will be. Um, I can't give it, I guess, an exact date, but uh, later this fall, I believe, we'll be releasing the next uh, the next data graph version, which pro- will probably be five point one. So thanks so much, everyone, and uh, and I hope you hope you have a good weekend, and we will uh, announce our next topic on Tuesday. So in the meantime, if there's something you want to see, I'm still considering what I'm what I'm going to do next week. So take care. <laughs>